welcome. This is Steve Gilmore, and this is the Gilmore Gang. We're uh, doing a special show tonight uh, in honor of the galactic changes in the Apple uh, environment that uh, are about to be crushed by uh, former Apple and now former Google uh, representative Kevin Marks. By, by the way, Steve, there's somebody wheezing on the phone, so whoever's not talking, please meet your mic. Okay. Um, do you hear it now? Nope. Okay. Just hold your breath, Kevin. <laughs> I'll try moving the mic. Hang on. Yeah. How's that? I don't, that no, better? I'm still hearing it. Yeah. Anyways. Sorry, I got a bit of a cold. <clears throat> yeah. So I got my Maverick shirt out of the mothballs. <laughs> is that Dallas Mavericks? No, it's not Apple Mavericks because the new OS uh, X is codenamed Mavericks. Yeah, but why do you have a shirt? Because uh, it's Half Moon Bay. Where does Apple go on their off sites? To the Half Moon Bay Ritz. How do they come up with the name Mavericks? Because they're into Half Moon Bay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, to round out this uh, incomprehensible. Uh, uh, now, whoever you just turned on is definitely the Weezer. <laughs> it's definitely... I didn't turn anybody on. It's, all right. I'll just just have to deal with, you know, like, two Weezers every 20 seconds or so. All right. We need to have uh, Kevin be able to breathe. So... And also, welcome uh, from uh, CBS News. Is that right now? CBS Interactive. Okay. Uh, is Dan Farber. Welcome, Dan. It's nice to be here with all of you this evening. Okay, so go ahead, Robert. I, you're dying to say something. I can. Tell. No, I, I just wanted to kick it off uh, and see where it goes. I, you know, the, today uh, did anything change? Is market share going to change? I don't think so. Is profitability of Apple going to change? I don't think so. Is anybody going to switch their Android in for an iPhone? Uh, maybe. Is anybody going to switch from iPhone to Android? Probably not until there's a new Android OS. But it does leave uh, uh, Google three months to react, and that'll be the interesting thing. Will this be the, the palm of Apple? Is it going to be something that gets us all hot and bothered? Because I'm sort of hot and bothered by the new iOS stuff, and then we can talk about the Mac stuff later. Um, can we? Yeah. All right. We could talk about Xbox. There's a new Xbox today announced, a new no, price. No, I'm sorry, but we can't. Uh, and there's a, new, there's a PlayStation press conference going on at this moment which uh, lots of people are praising. So, anyways. Uh, by the way, Phil Schiller lives in Half Moon Bay. Uh, somebody nailed that. Michael Roberts nailed that in the uh, chat room. So, you go hometown. All right. So, uh, I'm not going to try and pull that apart. Uh, but uh, let's start with Dan Farber. Uh, any, uh, anything that Robert just talked about that you uh, agree with? Well, I don't necessarily, I don't disagree with what Robert said. I think that Apple... Uh, basically did a nice iteration. They kind of call it the Johnny Iveization of Apple's software, iOS and Mac OS 10 or Mavericks. Um, you know, some very nice features. You know, the he likes to talk about, you know, more coherence and and better grids and better icons and translucency, translucency and just a better user experience overall. And that's what Apple does well. I think the big difference and Cook pointed this out as well during his keynote, is that Apple has full control of the hardware, software, and ecosystem. If you look at Android, you know, it's huge. It's uh, growing faster than what Apple is doing. But, you know, there's three different versions of the operating system, and the most popular one is the one from uh, 2010, whereas 93% of, of, of iPhone and iPad users are on iOS version 6. So there there are some differences and advantages that Apple has and they don't need to own all the market share. They just need to maintain and grow a bit as the market overall grows. Kevin Marks. Um, what, what I saw today was um, definitely some good updates and there were some good interesting in the background fixes to iOS and to macOS and to make it more efficient and schedule things better. And, and let, let things work under the hood, um, which is which is very, which is very welcome. The new design stuff didn't really take me one way or the other. There wasn't anything there that, that made me go, "Yes, this is this is uh, revolutionary." What I'm seeing there is a lot of convergence. I'm seeing this um, 
cards and um, light text and separated um, flat layout stuff that, that Google has been doing for, for a while, that Twitter has been doing for a while, seems to be seeped into Apple as well, and they've, they've picked up that style. Um, the yeah, and, App, and Apple picked up a bunch of, of, of you know good features that other people have been shipping for for a while, and, and I'm sure they will make them you know mainstream and make them work very well. And suddenly they'll be the designers will then understand them well enough they can use them in the other platforms too. There's one exception, Kevin, and the the one I've been listening to a lot of mainstream media today and what they take took out of this two hour keynote and put into two minute you know okay. uh, feedback. And the one thing that stuck on across mainstream media was the the uh, anti-theft feature in the uh, new iOS 7. And I, that is attractive to me because I, my friends have had phones ripped out of their hands. And I, I hope to see that also come to the Android side of the fence as well. But Apple devices certainly get ripped off at a far greater rate than other devices. Yeah, actually, my, my, my iPhone got stolen, that's true. Actually, the coolest thing was the Mac Pro. Yes. Which, which was really, you know, and, and I think, I think Apple's point in teasing that out was not that they could lose a lot of sales on it because it's a, you know, kind of a, a low volume product, but it actually showed that, that Apple can really innovate. And I think the whole question is, okay, well, Apple can iterate. They can improve the user interfaces. They can give a speed bump and a battery bump to the, the MacBooks. But can Apple do something really crazy good? like they did with the iPhone and the iPad. And I think the Mac Pro gives an indication that that's still there. And Cook has said at All Things D that, that uh, Apple still has a lot of game changers uh, in it. And yeah, that's, that's, okay. a, that's a good indicator. But Dan, come on, a bleeding edge desktop PC, I, although I need one of those because I do a lot of video editing and my friends at Pixar are going to go nuts with this because it's faster speed for processing. But it, it hardly gets me hot and bothered anymore to have a cooler desktop PC. This world is a mobile world, and that's where the big fight is. And well, that, that is where the big fight is. But, okay, compare the Galaxy 4 to the iPhone 5 or the HTC One, whatever. I mean, they're all in the same game. So what is, what is the, the big change? Is it going to be the Motorola X? Uh, is it going to be, oh, you can... You, well, you, you, and somebody else is is crunching in the microphone. I wish you guys would put the stuff on mute if you're not talking, because it'll really help the quality of this audio. But I, uh, you know, yesterday t t uh, an Israeli company came to my house and showed me uh, face and eye detection that is just mind-blowingly better than Samsung. If a 12-person team in Israel can do mind-blowing stuff for the phone. What is Apple doing with its $140 billion? Why, why are they so slow? And is that just going to be the way Apple is from now on? Or are they just going to wait for the market to kill it, to do the innovation, show that there's a new feature, a new thing that can be done in a phone, and then back up and wait a year, improve it? And that's what Apple does really well, and then take all the profit. But, but that I seems think that, to be what's going on. That's the danger for Apple right now. And at the keynote today, um, and I'm writing about this for tomorrow. Unlike most product demos where they just come out, here's our new products, they're really cool, they're great, here's, here's what they look like, here's how they work, here are the specs, uh, here's the configurations, here's the price. They bookended this whole two-hour event with two videos that were about values and about, let me just give you a little bit from, from the first video. First of all, it's taking shots at Samsung. It says, is everyone, if everyone is busy making everything, how can anyone perfect anything? Which is to say, Apple's designs are going to be close to perfect and everybody else is just busy with abundance and creating more choice when it's not needed. Design requires focus. So Apple is uniquely focused. And the first thing we ask people is, what do we want people to feel? So this is a case where Apple isn't asking people what they want, they're, they're, they're asking like, well, how do we want people to feel about our products? So it's really about how do they addict people to their products? How do they create really compelling products? And they've got really and, smart people. They and, have good and that technology, let, but let's they're just talk slow. about that They're like a tortoise, so they think yeah. they can win in the end. But that, that does resonate on me, and that cause, calls back on my memories of Steve Jobs. He's the only CEO is, who has asked me to look at the back of a computer to see how beautiful the back is. And, I, you know, it, 
it was this computer actually or the earlier version of the iMac he asked me to look at the metal back now I, I've written on mine but you know most people don't care about the back the most CEOs don't care about the back they, they they care about you know okay put a good piece of glass in there good good processor gets good speeds but but who cares about the back put some vents back there and put some plastic back there and make it look crappy and today you know I have this brand new Samsung Android phone latest Android so the fragmentation problem isn't hitting this phone but it crashed during a phone call today my iPhone has never crashed and so that does resonate well with me. It ha mine has but, well, but okay, I, it's I very take rare point. that an iPhone crashes or has very, very, very rarely does an iPhone cause me pain. Where on Android, I, I hit pain points once in a while. Some things don't work. Some things hang a little bit. Some things are crunky looking. There's some pain there. It's, it's the ugly back that Steve Jobs used to point at. And, and uh, you know, iPhone, iOS, and, and I'm looking at three Mac and three big Mac screens here. They, they, they're very rarely do they hurt me that way. Now, on the other side of that, very rarely do they show me something new. You know, but, I think, but I think that's, that's kind of what Apple is banking on, that they don't need to show you something new all the I, time. What they need to do is be better in just the ways you talked about. But, but that's I the talk point. about it as, as yeah. what Johnny Ive and, and his teams talk about is that there's some kind of uh, oh, unique beauty or um, divine symmetry that exists that people can feel. They just can't quite understand what it is, but it attracts them to Apple okay, for so, those reasons. So I want to roll b both of you guys up into, uh, and, and maybe Kevin, although he's going to you know, come back to his TechCrunch post and tell us about how screwed uh, Apple really is. But the, the thing that I felt today in aggregate uh, is, is that Apple uh, proved that they have survived uh, Steve Jobs' death. And I think that that's a profoundly important thing, not just for Apple, but for Google as well, because it's going to really force Google to up their game mm. in ju precisely the ways that Dan is talking about. There's I agree with you there, Steve. I think it's worse. It's still an Apple and Google world. I don't think the market shares are going to shift because of this. I right. think well, we agreed with that. The, but, but it dramatically locks BlackBerry and Windows Phone users out of this market. Yeah, still. but they, you know, Anybody they were dramatically used, locked out of this market before uh, no, but today. This, but this even pushes forward and and keeps uh, anything that it takes away a lot of the advantages of Windows that that they were selling. Okay, but let's let me just uh, uh, extend the 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 thing that I'm trying to, to uh, get on the table here, which is uh, I was struck by uh, the sense of humor by Craig. What is his last name, Dan? Craig's last name is I will get it to like Ferengi or something. Yeah, something like that. Well, eventually, and I think fairly soon, we're going to know what his last name is uh, because he had he used. A very jobsy and sense of humor on stage today. It was really impressive, and people noticed it. It was even more than that. He actually had the almost the same uh, walk and uh -huh, posture uh -huh. as Jobs. He it did. It was uncanny. I really noticed that. And what he's what he communicated was the passion for the product and for everything about it. He communicated it. He used it. He likes it. The, he liked the people in the audience who liked it. That equation has been missing for two years. Now, yeah. And his name is Craig Federighi, and he, he was with Steve at Next. He was at Apple before that, and then he was at Ariba for several years as the CTO before he came back to Apple. And he, in turn, energized Phil Schiller in a way that we haven't seen before. Yeah. Phil Schiller has been, you know, sort of like he looks like he's a lost puppy dog. Today, he felt like... He was reengaged in the uh, in the company, and and Eddie McHugh uh, did, or Q, whatever his name is, he did a good job, the, and and Tim Cook did a good job. He got on, he got off, he got out of the way, and he let the developers talk to the developers, and of course, that's the underpinning of this whole, whole platform. Uh, uh, another couple of uh, things that happened today were uh, they buried. Uh, iTunes radio 
they didn't really make a big deal out of it. And I thought that was very smart of them because uh, the immediate reaction I had, and I'm a Spotify, you know, premium user, is Spotify's gone. I don't know any idea. Okay, well, I, I'll be glad to hear uh, your argument, but yeah. that was my reaction it, is that, it, you know, it, they're basically going to promote I, uh, iTunes Match into existence. Yeah. iTunes Match was, you know, was a problem in search of a solution. What are you going to do? You're going to go off and steal all the music and then I, have Match give it I, to I, you? I mean, this is, uh, this is a meant, way of actually uh, opening up the records... Uh, of our history and delivering them for a certain very small price. I agree uh, that it kills Spotify in a lot of ways, except I, I was meeting with some startups tonight and they're building uh, a new kind of photo app that's going to use Spotify as the platform underneath that's going to bring music up based on what you're shooting. And that platformness is is not going to come out of Apple. Uh, it will if you're all on iPhone, but let's be honest. There's, I, 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 there's I agree. Lot. There's there's and, a lot of room for innovation. Wait a second. Wait a second. This uh, iTunes Radio is on the Mac. It's on the PC. It's on Apple TV and on iOS. So it's, it's not on Android. Android. again. It's a mobile world, man. This is a mobile fight. Right. Eight out of every. Well, let me give you the mo let me give iOS. you the mobile numbers. Three hundred million people iTunes on iCloud. I get that if you're on an Apple only, but I, there's a, I have an I, I have Android here, man. I, I need the device services that go cross-platform. I'm going to be, uh, some of my family is going to be on an iPhone. Some of them are going to be on Android. And I, I, using Spotify as a platform makes a lot more sense. It's like web versus AOL or versus Microsoft Blackbird. Okay, so I, I'm almost done with... I think if you're Apple, you're saying like, well... You know, if we can force you to be all Apple, we like that. Yeah. Okay. So a couple more data points. Uh, the use of the browser as the delivery mechanism for their... Uh, iWorks. iWorks was extraordinary. Uh, you know, Kevin, maybe you can tell me what, no, was, what are they doing nice. there? Well, what, I mean, that, that, was, that looked like a nice piece of work. Somebody said that what they're doing is they're using SVG and JavaScript um, to, to do the layout and doing that dynamically. Um, I think that was the information from a session at WWC. And that's, yeah, that, that, was, that was definitely showing some of the potential of what you can do with HTML layout. Um, there's, I've been talking about this a bit where Adobe is bringing their layout skills to HTML5, and that's, that's affecting what you can do with that. Um, that, so that, that toolkit is coming there. But, Apple has just shown they can do that too. But that also, you know, that one they said this will work on Chrome, which means it works on, on right. um, and, and Microsoft, it works on Chromebooks. And, and interestingly, oh, because when interestingly, I was watching they the put a bullet in the video, head of, uh, of uh, Firefox as well. See, when I was watching the streaming... It, it didn't show it on Firefox, which is weird. When I was watching the streaming, I could not watch it on Chrome. I had to watch it on Safari. It, uh, Kevin, are you saying that iWorks will work on all browsers, or will it only they, work on they, Safari? They, they showed it on Safari, they showed it on Chrome, and they showed it on IE. Um, they, they didn't mention Firefox, so I'm not quite sure what, what the detail is there. No, they, they specifically said that it was not, I mean, they said it was supported on the first on three platforms, three. not on Firefox. They, right. they aren't so, supporting it on Firefox. I mean, you know, basically Chrome is, so, has left so Firefox. That's just the reality. No, there's probably some back-end thing that, they, that isn't there, but they, that, that, I think that'll converge. Firefox has, has, has got pretty Oh, good I mean, they're not going to go away, but it, it it was very clear that they were making a, you know, the whole WebKit triumvirate is under stress at this point. And yeah. the question is, is you know, what's going to happen? This was a pretty political move on, on Apple's part. So the last point I want to make is the way that I guess you did too, uh, the, the way I watched this uh, uh, presentation was in my living room on Apple TV. Yeah, I watched it on my it, iPad walking around the streets of San Francisco, actually. Right. I, 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 I ran the iPad because I figured that the, the, the uh, Apple TV might go down. It didn't. This was a, a international broadcast yeah. uh, in 1080p. It looked like a million bucks. These guys own a new network. They're yeah. like the fifth network. Yeah, and I think they did that. 
You know, in the past, the PR team has decided not to uh, live stream their presentations because they wanted to reward the press for showing up and the press would get all the hits, right? So, you know, and Gadget and Gizmodo and TechCrunch and on and on, they would get millions and millions of hits because that was the only place you could learn in real time about what was being disclosed at one of these press conferences. Now, I think they've switched. The press is a little bit less important, and having everybody see the well, I, don't, I don't agree that they're less important. I, I think you know what Dan Farber is giving us no, but today let's is be honest, we context. All, He's giving we, us the context of what we uh, are seeing, but, but we don't but that, have to leave our living room in order to do it. But we know context shows get far fewer hits than having the first. When I took a picture of the first Retina screen iPhone and put that out, I got 750,000 hits because I had the first comparison of the old phone with the new phone. And being first and having the first picture to explain some new technology that's coming out, particularly coming out of Apple, but out of any of these companies, is re really makes a, a big difference. The Gilmore Gang will never, will not get 750,000 hits. No, and, nor, and but, <laughs> what it, but, you know, the numbers that uh, were given out by uh, Tim Cook about, uh, you know, the number of dollars that flow through the network, I mean, you know, how many billions of dollars uh, of of controllable revenue are watched by uh, you know the various shows? It's you know this this show is modeled after Meet the Press and I a show that used to be on the air called The Capital Gang, and you know when you can uh, when you can apply context and uh, a sense of technical knowledge, read Kevin Marks and uh, the kind of social expertise that you are now, you know, the prime progenitor of in a, in a single like, interactive yeah, broadcast okay. and push it up to Apple TV, whether it's on YouTube or directly on the Apple network, whatever they decide to do, this was a watershed in terms of their, uh, you know, basically, you know, the second stage booster sort of fell away and they've got this end to end platform and they're, they're playing for the TV set more than any other thing that they're doing right now. In my, at least in my opinion. So I wanted to just to set those, those things up because from my read, this was a profoundly disruptive and important, uh, Apple event, probably as important as anything, uh, since the uh, uh, the uh, iPad was shipped, uh, anybody want to argue with me? Uh, yeah, I'll argue with you. Go ahead. Um, Put your Google I, Glass on. You know. Here you go. I got my Google Glass okay, right here. Thanks. Um, I uh, I don't see it as as that disruptive. I do see it as it shored up its business. It it's it's not going to lose a lot of. Uh, of the really high value customers to Android or to Windows Phone or BlackBerry. It's not going to lose a lot of the developers, although you're going to see more and more support Android first because of, of the openness of the Android platform and because of the dramatic more numbers and the numbers are, ma are starting to matter. Uh, you're not going to see the profits change a lot. Uh, this this locked this locked in the high profit customers. You know, let's be honest. The people who are uh, tech passionates are extraordinarily high profit, and we use uh, mobile services at a h much higher rate, and we're much more interested. When I spoke at LeWeb last week, most of the audience was on iPhone. When I spoke at NextWeb, most of the audience was on iPhone. When I spoke at to the University of Amsterdam, the tech passionate kids there who are in the in the computer and the business schools almost all iPhone. This is, uh, this is the high profit audience. These are the audiences that make culture, that are musicians, that are journalists, that are, you know, uh, teachers, that are, you know, people who are influential and who use this stuff at a high, they, much they, higher rate. They, they rewrote what these uh, phones look like. Uh, they pushed Google into being a fast follower again. You know, I, I can't. Well, that's not true. So what what Google did with that, that was that really three D interface but, but, is going to sell. They are going to go through. They're going to have to double their uh, inventory on 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 the on these new uh, uh, tools that they release in the fall. 
Okay. I don't gonna... see I don't see Android losing in this battle. I see Windows losing. I see BlackBerry losing. Uh, we've already agreed with that. We've already right. agreed with that, Robert. What I'm I, saying to you is, is that I Google think... Google is not going to come up with fit and finish uh, the integrated you know, strategy of hardware and software. They're not going to be able to I do totally this. I totally disagree with you. This this new app that I showed you last Friday called Everything Not Me has far deeper integration and is far more disruptive to my use cases than anything I saw from Apple today. The openness of the Android platform is going to bring... You didn't like the little cars things. running around? Oh, come on, man. I didn't see anything that really changed. And in fact, my... my I, I knew what was coming. This is why I was I've been so angry at Apple for two months. My my next door neighbor was on the first iPhone team. He has friends all through Apple, and we talk about this. We meet with Apple employees here. Mark Canner was here yesterday. We're, we're always talking. The, I knew there was nothing dramatically new coming here. The, look at TechMeme. Is there anything that's like, oh my God, they just announced a new sensor, or they just announced a new wearable computer, or they just announced something that's just m totally life blowing? No, they made it look better and they made it act better, and they added a few really neat features like not getting your phone ripped off. I love that, but they. This is not a disruptive thing. This is not a dramatically new product category. This is not you know a new tv we, we didn't we didn't hear about tv we didn't hear about wearables it we was didn't hear all about... tv it was all no, about tv no, oh, of course no. it was Come that on, big button man. new box it's a tv Come production on. studio I mean, everything well, about it's, it's this It's a 4K film production studio. That's, that's what it's Come on. Yeah, I mean, films I mean, are they released have on television. They're called, it's called binge viewing. This everybody is a binge who, viewing production station. Everybody who no, works in a TV station is going to buy a Mac anyways. Come on. No, but the, but, that's, but the point is... They've, they're they not going to buy a Dell machine. Come on. You're, 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 looking at, you're, you're not seeing well, the forest for the trees, Robert, but I want to hear what Dan Farber thinks. All right. Well, I think we've seen this picture before. Uh, it's just that uh, Google is now Microsoft. So it turned out that you know Apple had a few hits in the in days gone by, and they got a decent market share, and they made a lot of profit, and that was all good. Then came mobile, and they got huge market share and huge profit, and now they're going to go back to being you know having huge profit and less market share. So they'll continue to have their differentiated product and control their hardware, software, and ecosystem. And Google is going to uh, continue to get better and better and better. I mean, they have just incredible engineering resources. A lot of this um, stuff I saw today reminds me of this, Dan. Yeah, yeah. You know, the OS on Palm was really beautiful. It had multitasking. It had nice cards. It had nice look. It, it, it reminded me a lot of that. Now, what was wrong with Palm was it got me hot and bothered, and then two months later, Apple came out with a better phone. And then when they announced this tablet, Apple two months later came out with a better iPad. And has Apple left a hole for Google to jump through in the next three months? Because this is this stuff's I, not going to ship to consumers until fall. It's not, it's not a three-month game. I mean, Apple also plays a game where they actually have a lot of data on when people's contracts are up. So it's not like everybody can say, oh, I love that product. Right. I'm going to go dump my contract and get that. I think I'm not talking about the business. A lot, of it has to do, a lot of it has to do with the fact that there are two now very strong platforms. You know, yeah. one is kind of the, the, the art and beauty of product design from Johnny Ive and company. And the other is fast and furious and open. And both can win. I, and I just I agree with that. I, I just think Google clearly was going to announce something at its at its developer conference a few weeks ago and clearly pulled it. That's why Larry Page was on stage for forty five minutes because he he had a space to fill that was filled and they pulled it. So what? No, I don't think so. And I you think they I that. think they did, man. I I know how Vic Condotra thinks. He was not going to come out with something before Apple. He wanted to wait, let us well, all hatch through what Apple's going to no, do. I think that, I think and, they're giving a little gives, running room to Motorola too. And and what and did they, I just they, get an invite for? Things. Guy Kawasaki just invited me to Motorola to see its new phones. He says you're going to have your mind blown. So in a month I'm going to go to Google and see a, a new Google phone that is going to come in and eat away at some of this product announcement. And, and it's going to continue the mindset that Android is the more innovative or Google is the more innovative company. Why am I wearing Google Glass? This is telling me that Google is 
it's cutting a wedge through the ice of innovation and trying to come up with a new product category. Now, do they get there? We can argue about that for the next six, we- hey, we, six months, Robert, which we, we will. Robert, get more Robert right? we know how that works. And I know that Google is, is more of an extraordinary company than many, but we know how it works. Yeah. Apple didn't have the first tablet. Apple didn't have the first well, so-called Newton. smartphone. So therefore, Newton. what Apple, Apple does Newton. well is they kind of the sit Newton back and they do their research and have really smart people device. and they figure out like, how do we turn this into a mass market? But Apple also had that that killer tablet uh, video that that uh, uh, God who did it back in the eighties. You know the Knowledge Navigator. Oh yeah, it, that was that was extraordinary, and it still hasn't been realized. Right, and that was so that Apple was under Scully's always, watch. The old Apple always stuck in my head that something dramatically different was coming. The iPhone really was a rethinking of what existed already. Or but remember it had the a touch Newton. surface. Yeah. Nobody else had shown me a beautiful touch surface like that before Apple did, before Steve Jobs did. Uh, and I, I like that old Apple that pushed things forward, you know, and that had a little bit of that, we're going to do things perfectly and we're going to push them forward at the same time. And I, I'm still, I'm not feeling that warm about this uh, announcement today, but I think it left the hole for Google to jump in. I think Google now has two months to get some really dramatically interesting I agree things. that it left a hole, but well, it, the best it's thing not going to be filled in two months. Well, the best thing they could do is get everybody months. on the same version of Android. Yeah, that would be helpful. Uh, and and that gives us an that. opening for uh, Kevin to talk about what the fragmentation problem is. Yeah, Kevin Mark says it was Alan K. But. With iOS. But uh, yeah. the, the other major announcement uh, that was thrown throughout this was to this uh, point that I think we're debating right now, which is, uh, the ability to take uh, notifications, to take maps, to take this and that, and make it usable on the PC, so you know, the, the Mac, uh, and then throw it over to the phone. That's right. Throwing it over to the phone is, is huge. That's what any of us who are fanboys already do, and they made it one click. Yeah. The, right, but, but on that, Google, it's zero clicks. Uh, that's wonderful, but, you know, the... the no, but it literally is. You know, the, the example is you search for maps on the desktop. Oh, and then you have to press the button and send it to your phone. On... I can't, I've got visitors here. On... <laughs> hey, on, Christy and, and Chris. <laughs> and they brought you, you wine. <laughs> and let's talk about Google Waze, because Google Waze is more important. <laughs> Wave? So, I don't think so. Waze. Well, it's, Waze. And, and, Google. Yeah, I heard him. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're trolling me now. Okay, so so the the, the point is, if Google has already sold this with the, with the Google Now thing. If you search for um, on in Chrome on Google Maps, then when you go to your phone, it's already there in the card. Directions directions to where you're going. Yeah, that, I I, I, I agree. I agree that they they stole a lot of good things uh, that have been no, but, but they missed on some Android. Of the of them. Well, can yeah, I? But the, but the, can, let me let me finish yeah. what I'm saying. Which is okay. that uh, the, that screen that they now have, which uh, is available on the lock screen, they've moved notifications uh, as a uh, its first uh, iteration and primary surface is now the lock screen, which is also a major change. And that lock screen, uh, you know, that whatever they call it, the contact center, the control center, it has AirPlay front and center. It has air uh, throw or whatever it is where you can throw pictures and do all that kind of stuff. Scoble, do you need, you know, you need some, um, uh, you need a chaperone, basically. I I need some wine, for sure, yeah. No, you already (laughs) are acting like you you are drinking. The the phone that Scoble's got there has that control center on it. You know, if if he swipes up, he gets that. You know, there's... they they basically put all the things like you know when you're on a plane and you have to shut the thing down and all this kind of stuff it's now one yeah. click yeah, they they're yeah, taking they're taking it's their operating the system and they've integrated it across I'm sorry. their their uh, the mac and ios in very meaningful ways which are going to accelerate all of these things what are you showing me kevin I'm- I'm I'm showing you that oh, I see the, what you're showing me. The Samsung yeah. has the one click Samsung to turn on GPS to do all that. Right. And, and his has got a different interface. And this yeah, is, but, it's got, this is but, it, but it's all one click. Well, so that's great. You know, so if we can get, you know, like like uh, Dan said, if we can get uh, 17 interfaces down to two, then we'll be doing better. 
Well, but we not, won't. That won't happen either. No, because on Android, people like to customize and like different user interface. And I think that's one of the powers of Android, that there's so many different app launchers. I, I pick everything.me, but other people were arguing with me all weekend. All about right, how, so which is it? Sucked. Robert, and which is it? Is it? Is it normal people or is it uh, edge uh, you know, propeller heads? I think there's a market for both. You know, Android has, uh, Android has a lot of those people who want to customize their phones. You know, my dad doesn't want to customize his phone, so Apple's. I, I'm going to leave my dad on Apple because it's easier to figure out what he's trying to do. You know, and Apple has a market force and a lead in terms yeah. of moving to the TV that is going to mean that everybody's going to have to follow them, and I think that's hugely that's true. disruptive. So let's look at what Apple has. They have a distribution system that is unparalleled. The the stores around the world, you walk into an Apple store, it's like Starbucks. It's a consistent experience. They have the best support team. They have the best PR team. They have the best uh, uh, design team, although you could argue here and there that you know Microsoft may have, might have pushed the world forward a bit with the, the new uh, Windows 8, but I, I don't really care about it that much. But... Uh, I think overall the best design team, right? They have the best supply chain overall. Uh, you could argue Samsung is each eating away there. But they have so many advantages that I think you're right. That's why I say the profits aren't going to change. The market share is not going to change. The, the usage model is not going to change. But what is changing is they just locked out Windows and BlackBerry. Keep people. It, those two are unsafe platforms to bet on. If anybody's betting on those platforms, I'm sorry, you're not making rational choices. So we're we're saying that Apple is safe sex. Is that what we're saying? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, you know, when I sold cameras on the retail store, it, there were certain brands that were always safe to buy. Uh, you know, in the old world of the technology industry, like Dan and I would, if we were talking in the in the seventies, we would say nobody gets fired for buying IBM. It was the default choice. It was the easy choice. It was the non risky choice. It it had the best overall support and the best overall ecosystem and all that. That's clearly Apple and Google. Anybody who's betting on you know Windows Phone or BlackBerry right now is betting on a on a non-safe platform. It's just not getting the developer support. It's not getting the ecosystem. It's not getting the integration between devices. I mean, I, the reason that Google Glass is interesting because it, it integrates with my Android phone. And actually, it integrates with my iPhone too. That doesn't happen on, I can't use Windows Phone with this thing. I can't use BlackBerry with this thing. So two platforms are still going to win, and the, the market shares are not going to shift all that much. I don't think, I don't think you know, I would I would be very shocked if in the next 18 months the market share shifts by more than 5% between Apple and Google unless Google Glass is a huge hit right out of the gate and I don't think it'll be that fast of a hit. I think Google Glass is a bet for 2014, 2015, 2016 and that's going to force Apple to come in to wearables. You know, I think that's why there's 100 people working at Apple right now on a watch and soon we're going to hear about another team, you know, hey, right. we're okay. you know, that, working on wearables. All right, so uh Dan, uh, what do you think is going to happen in the fall from Apple and Google? Well, it's still very iterative. And we saw pretty much what Apple intends to put out in the fall with its operating systems. And, you know, they'll have a new phone that apparently isn't, isn't you know, going to be a bigger screen phone, but more along the lines of what they have now. And, you know, Google is, you know, I think continuing to iterate very quickly, especially on the software side. And if you look at Google now, uh, if you look at some of the things you can do with Glass and uh, just improving search and their apps, I mean, they, it's, it's an incredible powerhouse. And the thing that I think someone mentioned is that part of Google's strategy is to be on every other operating system. So in some ways, they're trying to hijack uh, iOS. Yeah, isn't by, it? What Seven out of every ten of the most popular apps are uh, Google apps, you know, like Google Maps, uh, YouTube, right. Google but Search, we did, we Gmail. We did notice that uh, Apple made a deal with Bing for the yeah. first time up if, to handle some of its search, uh, I think, related to Maps. For the Siri. Siri would feed to Bing. We're related to Siri, right. All right, right. so I, I don't hear anything from you about, and I want to ask uh, Kevin the same question and then mm -hmm. Robert. Uh, but I, I don't hear anything about uh, TV, and uh, I'm surprised that you haven't talked about it. Well, Damn. TV has been a big...
big topic of discussion for everybody. Uh, you know, well, Apple, are they doing a TV? Are they doing a, a box? Are they doing this or that? No, I'm I think, not talking about a TV box. I'm talking yeah, about I, I TV. Yeah, you know, I think, I think the, the next big game changer for Apple has to be solving the complexity problem with TV. Um, but that, you know, very much yeah. like the look how, look how long it took them to get all the music guys on their side. And the uh, t cable and TV guys are going to be much harder. Yep. Yeah, it's, and cable is starting to get a clue. I just got a new X1 uh, box a couple of weeks ago, and there's another one coming out tomorrow. So yeah. Comcast is iterating. And by yeah, the way, how did you get that? How do by you, the way, did you just did, ask Steve? Them for you got to come over to my house and see this thing because you talk into your iPhone, and you say switch to CNN, and CNN comes up on the TV. Or you say uh, record uh, Law and Order, and it, it starts recording. It's crazy. And the, so the cable companies are starting to iterate and starting to make sure that Apple doesn't come in and eat their lunch. I think this is one of the reasons that they've been so resistant. They they've want to keep their business intact and don't let want to let Apple right. control it. But guess what? Netflix has changed the uh, equation, not in terms of cutting the cord, but in terms of uh, establishing what I think is a, is a fifth network. I mean, Apple it, with just look at what they've done with the music, with radio. What they're doing is they're taking match, which is a streaming service and they're turning iTunes into a streaming service. Which is, yeah. which, which is, is what Spotify and Google right. really do. Yeah. So when they do that with, with uh, video, that's something that they can work just like they've done with the uh, record right. companies that they can work with the studios. The the I man out but, here is Comcast. Uh, that's a difficult thing, for, a pill for them to swallow because it, it's impossible. Because that's that's because that's how the studios make their revenue because by being yeah. uh, that's being true. On, that's on true. Podcasts. But there's there's a well, lot of pressure now because of Netflix. I mean, uh, Tina just told me that our daughter yesterday said she's 12 years old. She says she watches more uh, Apple TV than any other kind of television. That's true. It, it's just starting in to terms switch. of time. It's starting to switch, and it, it's. Um, so you know, if we think about this as as is Apple going to announce a box, uh, I, I think about it is is that they've already announced the box. It's the controllers for the box, yeah, that are in play right now, and yeah. they've got an end to end solution. It was extraordinary to go out in the living room after I read about it on the on the tablet. It said you know there's an icon on the uh, splash page on the Apple TV. Just go and look. And it was like, oh, click here. It's just yeah. like, you know, we watch uh, All My Children, uh, for those of us who are addicted to that still, uh, on Hulu. Uh, there's Netflix. Now there's a third icon, which is Apple. It's it's a big deal. I, it, I it agree. It just as good, if not better, I, I, than network broadcasts. Uh, believe me, I've been watching YouTube streaming uh, for a long time and being amazed. Coachella was live streaming uh, direct to all my devices, including, uh, I think it even supports Apple TV now. But, uh, you know, it's just, well, it does through uh, AirPlay for sure. And it's uh, it's stunning, right? It's stunning that this stuff works. It's, it's magic to me because I remember the world where, you know, 20 years ago we were playing with CU, See Me and trying to get a little... Uh, 160 by 120 video, uh, a two frame a second video to come through the internet over a 56k baud modem, and uh, and t to me that was magic. And now to be able to talk to you guys through Skype and then have it shoved out to a worldwide audience is just crazy. This is magic to me. But to my sons, it's like whatever, <laughs> whatever, Dad. <laughs> yeah, to your kids, it's like uh, what is no, TV? My, my my they don't know what son, the old stuff is. My autistic they never son heard of it. If YouTube stops working, he throws the iPad on the floor. He's so disgusted that it doesn't work. Was, to me, it's like, this is magic, man. <laughs> you know, but he doesn't have that context. He certainly doesn't have the understanding. Right? Okay, so Kevin, uh, what do you think is going to happen in the fall with Google and Apple? Um, well, Apple's... So Apple, what I, what I wrote in the TechCrunch thing is Apple needs to set the developers up so that they can ship phones with different screen sizes. Um, and they've been including this for a while, and the, the mini shows that you know, that's about as far as they can go with that. If they want to do something that is actually going to compete with the, um, the larger screen, higher pixel density phones like the, like the Samsung and the HTC One, they're going to have to change how the developers do things. And 
that's what I'm waiting to hear about in the in the back channel from WWC because th- there are hints of that in this new layout stuff. But they were giving you the high level picture, which ba- they're basically saying you've got to rewrite your apps to look differently um, anyway, otherwise it'll look out of place on this. And that may be their their hook to to rewrite the layout engine so that they can actually deal with um, much you know different form factor phones and, and and different devices and potentially devices that work on a TV screen without the without the sort of AirPlay um, version of that. With AirPlay, you've always got another copy of it in front of you that you, that you can look at and, and interact with. Um, for the TV device to work really well, you, you want to have something better than the, rem- than the remote app controlling the Apple TV. Um, and that, you know, that is going to need to that's going to need some changes in how this how this stuff works because stuff on a TV is very like holding the, the the Samsung S4 about here because it's a 1080p screen that's across the room. So that that sort of um, tension they've got between the the iPhone sized devices and the iPad sized devices and the TV is they, they need to resolve. One thing they didn't ship today, they shipped the the new iOS 7 version, but only for the iPhone. <coughs> they, haven't shipped, they haven't shipped the iPad version. All the demos today were iPhone only. Um, so that is, clearly there's something going on there behind the scenes that ties into the stuff I was saying about having to change how this works. Um, so I expect we'll hear more about that um, between now and then, um, but they don't want to give too many hints out because that, that'll leak product plans. They don't want to leak product plans. But I'm expecting them to launch... Um, a bigger range of phones, a phone that's something more along like the form factor of the of the S4, is probably in, with some different nice Apple twist about it. Um, but that's that's what's what's missing there. Yeah, and I would punctuate what you just said with uh, the numbers that Tim Cook gave around uh, the lead that they have in terms of tablets, which is extraordinary. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And it, so they clear. can they can afford to but, take a hit uh, if Robert's right about something in the next two two three months on the yeah. phone. Because they can come right back with a with the with the mini, uh, you know, right. as a control panel for this uh, television right. experience. And right, we but, know that, but, but they're going to have to do some back end reengineering to make that work. And that's the piece that they've got to convince developers to rewrite their apps to use. So Go that's, ahead, Robert. That's no, the I just think that when you hear this week, you know, there's going to be a, a an iPad Mini at some point that has a Retina screen. I mean, I, so many of my friends are waiting for that, you know, to buy buy into the Mini thing, so. All right, so uh, we got to wind this one down. But uh, uh, does everybody agree that uh, Apple showed uh, the component parts to reassemble, uh, at least potentially, and to some of us, uh, show that they they can, as uh, Phil Schiller said, you know, my ass, uh, you know, that they can reassemble uh, their. Uh, uh, sweet spot in terms of being able to uh, drive the market. Hmm. Well, I th- I think it's uh, steady as you go. Not that much different in the past. It's been uh, nearly eight months since they introduced anything else, so there's been a bit of a drought. So I think they they came up with a you know some some good futures, but I don't think it's anything extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Steve, unpack on that. What? What do you think uh, Google is going to copy from Apple? Uh, the way that they copied the iPhone in, in their early I think days. It, I think they're they're going to be forced to copy that uh, 3D look and feel. Uh, um, oh, yeah, they're going to be forced to because it's uh, it's compelling to okay. a wide range of ex uh, you know marijuana It's a smokers. feature. Yeah, it's, 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 it's my. No, I'm I just mean, telling you that the, 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 what they have done is to pull out of a whole bunch of different features an ease of use and a, just a look and feel that people it's like when Kubrick did yeah. 2001 he basically defined the architecture and the design of the I, space program before here, it existed here's where i think you're wrong i google is is starting to bring features that i call an all automatic world and when I upload a photo from my glass, it gets automatically improved. If I take ten pictures of you, it automatically bu- gets built into an automatic uh, into an animated GIF. If I take a picture like this, it automatically gets put into a, a panoramic, and it all is done on cloud. And I think Google is going to keep hitting Apple with with. 
features that Apple just hasn't shown us. One of the biggest uh, surprises was uh, for uh, something that Apple stole directly from uh, Android, which was automatic updates. That was yep. fantastic. Uh, yeah. One of the biggest uh, applause, uh, sort of a building applause, was for the, at least according to Apple TV, uh, Dan may argue with me about uh, how it sounded in the room, was uh, the memory stuff. Yeah. The way that they clean up memory, the way that they compress yes. it. The, the way... multitasking, uh, yeah. the way they are multitasking. Yeah. I, I, actually, beginning to true multitasking and intelligent profiling, that, that, that back-end engineering stuff they talked about it, for both it's just 10 huge. and Android iOS, I, it's the I, same that stuff. That goes yeah. to the point. Both Apple and Google, as well as Microsoft and others, are very clever. The question is, who can, who can create the most seamless and the most beautiful and the most easy experience for people? So yeah. far... That has been Apple. If you look at the Samsung Galaxy 4, it has far more features than the iPhone. But yeah. for a lot of people, it's way overkill and they can't figure it out. It's Whereas like what happened Apple, with... Uh, was, well, like, even if you can... I, I talked with, with somebody on the street who, who recognized me and has a brand new Samsung. And she's, she said she liked the uh, eye, eye tracking. But these two kids who came to me yesterday and showed me and talked to me about Samsung, because Samsung, they were bidding... Um, I'm sorry, Samsung was bidding to use this Israeli technology. The Israeli technology is way easier to use and way more powerful than the Samsung stuff. But Samsung went with the internally built stuff that wasn't as well done. So Samsung has deep problems, you know. But Google, you know, I see Google and Apple playing off each other and continuing to play Absolutely. off each other. Absolutely. And I, yeah. Therefore, I don't see either of them really hurting each other or doing much more damage to each other. I think we have the market shares that we have. We have the profits that we have. And we have the brands that we have. Google will go up in brand value a little bit faster than Apple, I think, because of things like self-driving cars and Google Glass and uh, Google Now and contextual stuff. By the way, did you notice that Apple is starting to bring in a little contextual stuff. Now your phone shows you apps uh, based on where you are. So when you get to New York, it shows you the New York subway right. app. And using, and the, using the accelerometer in yeah. that 3D feature is, you know, the, the thing that I got off of this was a sense of how uh, Apple works. And Kevin, you can probably confirm this for, since you used to work there, uh, is the, they have a process where they look at the environment that they have created and they and they factor out what they want to do from a uh, you know tactical perspective and then they start to look very deeply yeah. at what is it about this that we can improve and once they do that with one area then they start to use those lessons in other areas and it it develops this kind of inexorable seamless fabric which you know users understand intuitively yeah. and i i haven't seen a lot of uh, i expected dave weiner to be a lot uh, unhappier with uh uh with what was going on here but he doesn't seem to have had any particular kind of negative comments about this because i don't think it changes the game that much i mean, you know did they i, I what i'm just using him as a bellwether i mean you know yeah. one of the things that uh, attention and attention.xml sort of uh, drew out is that you know in addition to the people that you follow because you think they're right it's also helpful uh, in many cases and then sometimes it's even more helpful to follow people that you know are wrong by the way uh, right at this second Comcast tweeted to me a DM and said tomorrow at 1025 is the future of TV so they're watching the show they know what's in play I think this is they know what's going to get lost if if they let Apple just take over this whole world, and I think Xbox and Sony today uh, announcing new stuff uh, is uh, also cognizant that the world is shifting. It's shifting because of the ownership of mobile on these other platforms. You know that's why I'm not so excited. You know people are going, oh, go buy your X X Xbox. I, I'm like, why do I want an Xbox? I, you know, I don't really, I'm not a gamer. Even if I was a gamer, now you're going to make me buy all new $80 games? Give me a break. I, games are like Angry Birds to me. You know? And uh, by the way, the mind-blowing, interesting games that that use the processors in these mobile phones and these tablets are pretty, pretty crazy. I, I, think, I think gaming is really changing. And I think a Apple and 
and Google are really in a control seat right now, and Sony and Microsoft are going to struggle, and Comcast is going to have to play a different game than, they're, than they are. Well, I think it's very sm uh, smart and interesting that they are tracking this particular conversation. Uh, Kevin, last thoughts? Um, so, yeah, my, my last thoughts are that, that, that I'm waiting... I'm waiting to see, you know, for the other shoes to drop during the week and see how these things fit together. I mean, I think what you said about Apple working is is broadly true. They they do set an agenda and they they build things. But the other thing they do is they do have these internal um, competing teams to to promote features to to get them into the keynote. And that was that was a, a slight, something I saw in this one was it was a lot of demos from a lot of different teams who were excited to bring pieces up up to that that stage and show them off. Um, the meat of WWC is the next is the next four days. Um, and, and, and this afternoon, where they've actually got the in-depth sessions of these different technologies, and the developers get to decide whether they're actually viable or not. Um, and that's the piece that I'm, I'm, I want to you know, learn about from the, the people who've been, who've been paying attention there. Dan Farber, but, last thought. I'll get you. You're going to get one more shot, Robert. I promise. Well, it's, it's you know, overall, it's a very good time in the industry. There's a tremendous amount of innovation, even from big companies, and you know, who, who move much slowly. Um, but there's a ton of great, innovative, small companies who are doing some extraordinary things that, you know, hopefully see the light of day. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the that, uh, that feature, feature in, in uh, 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 what was it, somebody, oh, there was a, uh, something I read about maybe in Cena uh, a couple of days ago was uh, about uh, a keychain, basically, replacement to, to keep all of your... Uh, uh, your passwords and stuff and just sort of roll it up and you know Apple just went oh yeah well uh, we've got that it's shipped it's you know just wait till November <laughs> you know it's a classic kind of uh, uh, roll up move uh, the kind of thing that uh, Microsoft used to do whenever Symantec would invent anything in the desktop they would <laughs> it would be show up in the next OS uh, yeah. Robert I'm just reading, uh, Comcast just sent me a page with some of the stuff that's coming tomorrow. New uh, millions of Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots, a new Xfinity home control and energy management service. Uh, the the stuff is all cloud-based now, evolution of uh, Wi-Fi and voice control on the X1 remote app, and I think that's coming to Android as well, and not just iOS, but right now it's iPhone. So yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting day tomorrow. Uh, by the way, I finally figured out how to run my new Logitech camera and uh, control the color intensity and then see if I can make myself black and white. Oh, yeah. Back and, uh, to the future, right? I, I wish I'd known this an hour ago because I was overexposing and it was driving me nuts. <laughs> okay, well. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, back to, we didn't even talk about the MacBook Air. I mean, uh, we didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about. Power uh, saving. I mean, you know, is that with or without all of the. OS changes in terms of power saving. Is it 12 hours because it's bigger box? I don't know, but wasn't there a new Wi-Fi hotspot as well? I, I mean, I have the old one sitting over here, but there, there was some new high-speed Wi-Fi announcement today that I think I saw pop up on my iPad. I, there were a lot of announcements, uh, and Apple clearly is uh, in the driver's seat of the high-profit, high-brand, high-experience world, and I... I'm interested to see if Google can eat it at that in the next few months. I'm not so certain. So I, I'll grant you the point. Uh, Apple's still in the driver's seat of this industry. All right. Well, then I don't have to say it again. Now, so, <laughs> so, you know, Frank Shaw at Microsoft will probably say, uh, no, what are, you, what are you talking about? You get a new Xbox One and you have this brand new uh, Kinect sensor that can see that your, uh, your, your pulse is racing and can do all sorts of stuff. But Microsoft rarely really completes that service. I mean, I, the Xbox I have is, it, you know, the Kinect works on some things really brilliantly, and then you go a couple more pages over to the left, and it doesn't work anymore. It's not supported. And that's sort of where your argument against the Samsung is. You know, yeah, they have eye tracking, but it doesn't really work throughout the system very seamlessly and well. And so a Apple can sit back and uh, learn from that and next year come out with eye tracking that really works better probably by buying this Israeli company I saw yesterday uh, and integrating it that, that's that was Steve Jobs brilliance was he, he didn't need to build Siri 
he needed to identify where the future was coming from innovators, buy them, integrate it in. And yeah, it came a little bit later sometimes than other technologies. Uh, Nokia always said, oh, we have voice uh, response and stuff like that. But they didn't get the clue that it was the perfect integration that really mattered. It wasn't the fact that you had the feature. And I, and I feel that way with the Samsung phone. I, the the uh, eye tracking or the face tracking is, is pretty interesting, but it, it doesn't go far enough. And it, it's not throughout the system the way it should be. Okay, I want to thank... I guess I'm agreeing with you for once. Steve. I know, it's it's a sad day. <laughs> but don't worry, you'll be, uh, you know, you'll be back in, in full force and you've got your little thing on your head there, so... I think... I, I think mean, you got me to, get, to like it. This you know? is a game changer, but it's a long-term game changer and... I'm not so sure how long-term it is. It's really a, well, it's a cool it's, device, it really all, is. It, this won't ship until next year. So we're talking about CES at the beginning. Yeah, well, this uh, what the we're Mobile talking World about today Time won't ship until next year either. Well, no, it, by Christmas we're going to have most of the stuff that was discussed yeah. today. So that's yeah. this year. Same yeah, this is setting up for, that, for Apple's next Christmas, definitely. Well, I want my Apple TV. You have your Apple TV. It's a little black box underneath your I TV. I want more of it, and I want it soon because right. uh, I like the uh, shows on, on Apple TV better than the other shows. Uh, I want to thank Rackspace and particularly Rob Legess, without which this show would not be back on the air. I want to thank uh, New Tech and their TriCaster. I want to thank uh, Dan Farber. It's great, as always, to have you back, and uh, hope you, you'll Dan. do it more often. Thank you, guys. It's um, always an interesting conversation. I want to thank uh, Kevin Marks, and uh, even though I thought I could do a whole show on picking your article apart, <laughs> we can do that again. Everybody should read the, uh, uh, Kevin's article in the... Uh, you shouldn't release them Take in the much. middle of the night like you did. Uh, uh, that was because I was I know. late with it and they queued up behind other things. Yeah, well, don't let that happen again. And I want to thank why, Robert Scott. Why? Scoble. That way everybody in London reads it. That's true. Well, I mean, it's basically exactly. the stuff I said at the end of last week's show, but turned into an article. But do read it. I, there's, I, a lot, it it. there's a lot of I geeks in that. Europe, man. There's a lot of geeks in Europe. You, you can publish in the middle of the night and get a, a lot of hits in the middle of the night, and then uh, everybody over here wakes up and sees that you're at the top of Tech Meme, you know? Okay, so I'll release this show in the middle of the night then. Go for it. <laughs> Put, give some love out to our European uh, listeners, yeah? Okay, well, uh, and Comcast, I hope you're listening. Uh, oh, they are. <laughs> I want to thank our... You uh, have to hold off this bear. That's another thing. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, Apple's going after the uh, uh, the cable companies, and I think that they've got something to worry about. Uh, I want to thank our, uh, well, Robert Scoble, I want to thank you as always. Fantastic. I want to thank our producer and director, Tina Chase Gilmore. Ooh. And uh, uh, I want to thank the chat room, uh, although we didn't get to uh, talk with you as much as, as usual there we may do an extra show uh this week as well i'm on the way to new york tomorrow and we might do one uh from there uh thanks to everybody who showed up and especially those who didn't we'll see you again next time bye bye <laughs>